watch deal and we are live right now what all right that's right scotch test dummies here i'm scott boom i'm bart and scotch trooper brett scotch trooper jackpot we hit it big time today that's right scotch test dummies oh whoa what was that who was that wasn't me <laughs> Felt like a delay. all right we got um Hey, you know what we're gonna do? I got a sample of. Oh, what are we gonna do? Well, wait. We gotta say what we got. Balvini, sixteen-year triple cask. I've got a sample. Bart, you got a sample. Trooper, the bottle has, has the bottle right there. And uh, what is it, Bart? We're gonna test it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna. I'm just gonna tell you up front too. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna be disappointed that this is all that I have. I'm gonna have to seek out a bottle. I um, have one that I can send you some more from, so we're good to go. All right. Sounds good. And also, um, we are fans of Scotch Trooper. I've got my Scotch Trooper shirt on, and I'm going to be drinking from my official Scotch Trooper Glen Karen glass. And I'm drinking from my Scotch Test Dummies Glen Karen glass, which, true story, was the very first glass, Glen Karen glass, that I've ever received. So, drinking awesome. from the very first on this momentous occasion. Now we've been around, we've been doing videos for just over three years now. And I think we got on Twitter in the spring of 14, probably about the same time as you. Yep. I think we were both pretty new, pretty fresh to Twitter and we were following each other. And this is actually the first time that we've ever all met up. Yeah. It, and happy that it finally happened. Yeah. <laughs> How many years later? Yeah. <laughs> well, and maybe me and Bart need to take a road trip, I think, and go to now we're in we're in Wichita, Kansas. You're in or just outside of Atlanta. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just south of it. When if you're in Atlanta and you drive south a bit, uh, keep on going. And then a little bit more south. That's where I'm at. All right. Now, when you're watching The Walking Dead, are they ever in any of the towns in your vicinity? Yes. Damn. Uh, all of Alexandria is actually like a five minute walk from our house right now. Ooh, look at that. Actually, Bart, if you remember, Trooper posted a picture on Twitter of him and Daryl and um, Rick. That is yeah. true. I remember that. You got to uh, meet was one of the producers. Yeah. 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 And uh, actually Rick and that, or no, Daryl and that producer uh, opened a restaurant downtown. Uh, oh, did they really? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Now what are they serving? A lot of meat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, beef products going on over there. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't eat there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. A lot of motorcycles. What are you doing, bro? You're looking at something? Well, I was going to comment. To We got a bunch of people that have joined in. I was going to comment. I've hit something, and I've gone full. That my, my YouTube screen left me for a second, and I thought <laughs> I closed it out, and now I've gone full screen. I hit one of the F buttons and I don't know how to get out of full screen. So I'm full screen. Anyway, let's go through real quick. Uh, Ron Boot, Maston Brook has joined us. Food Quig, Malted in Montreal, A Wee Dram, Lana right. Sutton, Daniel Willis, Boom, Raster. Raster. Uh, a lot of comments coming in. So, and guys, we'll try to pay attention um, to the comments. We'll try to comment on what we can. I'm watching it here on the right, and I'm qu I'm quite ADD. So uh, uh -huh. if you if you see me veering off, if just you see me drifting back, like come on, guy, that's my lazy eye. If you see me <laughs> drifting, that's what's going on. Now I gotta ask, I gotta ask Trooper some questions. First of all, Scott is the uh, photog of our group, but your shots are amazing. What kind of camera are you using? Is it anything special? Yes. Well, not special, but it's the uh, Nikon 7200. Um, it was my, I started off with the uh, D40X um, and I was shooting that for, I would say nine years. Um, and just when I started taking some, some of the higher res um, trooper shots, I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I think it's time to upgrade. Um, and so I got that and then uh, a couple lenses as well, which I switched back and forth with. Very cool. And for those that don't know, I'm asking that question because you've got these phenomenal, awesome photos that we'll get into later. 
that I include the bottle with like with like a, a Vader or a trooper figure or a or a Boba Fett, but the way you set the scene, it kind of tells a story. So I know we talked about maybe even being able to show a few of those photos later, but I wanted to touch on the particulars there of, of uh, but that's why I asked the question because you got these phenomenal photos. Yeah, thank you. It's been it's been a blast, um, and I uh, I always bring it back actually to to Belvini because they were the first ones to um, regram one of the photos that I posted, and it was just with one of my my daughter's little small trooper toys. Just threw it in front of the bottle, um, posted it. Oh. And, they they reposted it and I was like I might be onto something here. <laughs> yeah, I remember that it's like a little midget or a different shaped little trooper thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, kind of like anime mixture. Yeah, of, yeah. Um, but yeah, they posted that and I was like, holy crap, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> and then it's just I I've gone through um, three different inceptions of troopers, so I've I've upgraded from toy to toy to toy. Um, and this black series um, is phenomenal. Um, the amount of agility that are in the the characters. Now that's exactly one of the questions I was going to ask you because I keep asking Scott. When we first met, some people know the first thing he told me is, "Hey, I love Star Wars. I don't care if you make fun of me or not. I like it so much I collect the figures." Wait, well, first we're we're what we're twenty five, twenty six years old when this happens. Yeah. Yeah, we're back in. We're we're going back in the day. Okay, well, no, this was like, like last week. Like we were eleven, and we meet, and I go, "Hey, I'm a big Star Wars fan, like it or not." We're like twenty six. We're grown men. We're riding around, and <laughs> right. this is actually before you know episode one. Being before Lucas goes back and does episode one, so you just had the you know episodes four, five, and six were out, and I'm like, "Hey, by the way, I'm a Star Wars kind of super freak, and if you don't like it, you know, shove it." Yeah, right. <laughs> right, and so so as soon as I started seeing your photos. I'm like, what figures does Trooper have? Because this these things look great. I mean, and I'm asking Scott, and he's like, well, they look like the more of the standard. But I, but you know, I mean, I'm sure he knew, and he just was like, yeah, nothing. I thought maybe you were finding some unique, posable figures somewhere. No, <laughs> no, they're they're just the Black Series, uh, the six inch Black Series. Um, there's a there's a three and three quarter inch, I think, that they have out there, but they're pretty much like the old um vintage ones where just the arms are just real rigid and whatever um but these ones i mean you can tilt the head you can twist the wrist around and i mean you can get pretty much any position you want out of them which which makes it awesome um they, they are six inches because i did notice one they look taller than what i'd seen and that's why then. yeah yeah six inches um that's what she said yeah oh <laughs> oh you're so wrong yeah no bigger than this and with the, with the lenses that I'm using, um, they seem a lot bigger um, and the different angles that I use. But, yeah, I mean, in real life, quite small. Hey, real, real quick, let's, uh, Lana corrected me. Her name is Lana. I'm sorry. Uh, How dare you? She says she's going to need some thank you cards. Like some, you need to get with Hallmark or somebody to get like thank you cards, cards going with the troopers and the, and the whiskey bottles in there. I'm on it. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be cool, actually. I can even see some good Christmas cards with that on there. Whiskey Lassie has joined us too. Hey, Whiskey hey. Lassie! Now I've been in a Periscope with a uh, Whiskey Lassie before, but I think, and I think, or if she's joined us live before, she hasn't commented. I don't think so. Welcome. And uh, Raster thinks that we need to change our Scotch Trooper lamp Kaolila bottle to a, a Lagavulin or a Lafroy lamp, which we might have both. I've, I'm working on a Lagavulin uh, bottle or two right now, and we got several Lafroids. The, so. um, the actual, the Lagavulin um, 16 is, pro is one of my best-selling ones. That one, I just, I've gone through, I think, uh, 10 or 15. Wow, that's good. That was one thing we didn't see, too, is, is we talked about a little bit about your photos and stuff, but the lamps that you're doing, uh, just gorgeous, beautiful lamps. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, the but the the log of Olin's, from my perspective look the best. Like if I were to make one just for myself, um, it would be that. Uh, but it works out perfect with the size lamp that I made for you guys, um, since those bottles are pretty much identical. Um, I could cut and send one over to you guys, and it would be interchangeable. Wow. 
Uh, Raster also comments that Trooper wins the prize for the best background. Oh, yes. I said that when we logged in, Raster. I know we were talking about that before we even went live. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then this call's done. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs> now, is that like a repurposed back when everybody had the big, huge TVs and they had the whole wooden shelf thing around it? Is that what that's repurposed from? Um, these are three different bookshelves, um, that my wife had when she was, uh, before or pre me days. So, um, in her old apartment and we moved it from house to house and we were just tired of using it for bookshelves and TVs. And th there's a couple holes drilled into the back, um, for some TVs. Um, and finally, when we moved into this house, I, I just decided, I'm like, no, that, that's going in my basement. That's where my whiskey's going. And so we were looking around the house after we moved in because she was gone for the night. And she's like, where, where are my bookshelves? I'm like, oh, don't worry about that. And as she came down here, she, she just shook her head. She's like, yeah, no, no. <laughs> but she was too tired to move it back up. So here it stays. Now, great. Now, I know we were talking about these bottles you do, but I'd explain the photos. And for those that maybe haven't seen what you do, can you kind of explain how you got started on turning uh, scotch or whiskey bottles into lamps and, and what you do? So, yeah. So, I – how do I start? Again, we go back to Belvini um, with the 12-year um, double wood. Um, that was my first whiskey that I, that made me realize that I loved whiskey. Um, and I love the bottles as well from, um, aesthetic side. So I, I kept on holding on to the bottles after I would finish them. Um, and I had a nice collection going in the garage and I want, I knew I wanted to do something with it, but I couldn't figure out what. So, uh, we were about to move from Florida back to Atlanta and my wife's like, you either figure out what you're doing with those or they're being thrown away. And so I, I quickly rummaged through some ideas and I knew I wanted to do something lamp wise, but um, all I'd seen out there were people like drilling a hole in the bottom, sticking a, um, a socket in the top and a lampshade and calling it a lamp, uh, which look gr looks great, but I want to do something a little bit more and try to incorporate the bottle. Um, and so try to try out a couple different layouts. Um, had to lop off the top um, of the bottles to get the socket to fit through. Um, and since the Belvini bottle is curved right where it needs to be cut, um, I went through about 10 bottles before actually figuring out where to cut it before it shattered. Um, some quite frustrating nights, um, which led, led me to drink more whiskey and then have more empty bottles. So. <laughs> But yeah, so then uh, just uh, figured out a different, couple different ways to do it, and um, loved the the out what what came out of it, and it's kind of gone on from there. It came out with a couple different layouts, and um, yeah, they keep on going, um, loving it. And I think you even have photos of those. Do you have it up on your website? Yeah, um, it's on my blog. It's on my Instagram. They're kind of all all over right now. Um, I'm potentially thinking about taking down the lamp store um, and then just taking them by order. Um, Cause I like right now I have a back order of uh, five or six lamps that I just can't seem to get through right now with a bunch of other things going on. So I may do it by, um, by order, special order only now. All right. If you're watching, don't order any lamps. <laughs> <laughs> Send me an email and we'll work it out. Hey, a couple comments real quick. We've had a lot more people have joined in. Uh, for you, though, Scotch Trooper, Jerry Miller wants to know what you think Boba Fett, what his drink would be. Mm. I'll give you a second to think about that. If you watched, um, anybody that's watching, if you watched our Woodford Reserve Rye episode that came out last Wednesday, we talked about Boba Fett and what he would possibly would be his drink. Right. Because I was uh, just allowing you to still think, because I, I was leaning, of course, towards these these peated scotches and then Scott's like, oh, no, no, it's got to be something something strong. It's definitely I said it's be like a cask strength bourbon. He just he, – and he shoots it. He just, like, drinks it and he's done because he's, he's too busy. He doesn't have time to <laughs> – Yeah, he didn't even think around. he would savor the flavor. See, I think he might savor 
the flavor is something, but just quietly, just quietly savor whatever it is. What say you, Troop? I am going to say. I think I think it would be something PD. I think, it, but I also think cask strength. So I'm thinking the Lagavulin 12 year. Mm. Nice. No, I don't think anybody's commented or picked that one out yet. So good call. Yeah, I think it would have to be. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be something more complex and PD. That's that's me. But I hear what you're saying, Bruno. We all agree it'd be something strong, really yes. strong. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to yeah. get, maybe. And Bart Jerome D wants to know if the inner JA will make an appearance today. Uh, hopefully not. That's usually in recorded shows and when I get extremely excited. I will hint I'm trying to get Scott to agree to a large rye shootout. However, I was again probably overly ambitious and he's cutting my numbers in half. Hence, we may do a rye shootout of five bottles instead of ten, which is probably the sane response for a recorded show. Maybe four. Oh, come, you're killing me. If we do four, we got to do eight. <laughs> for those who don't know, shootouts are where we take something that's either in the same family. It could be all from we did a Lafroig shootout with eight, or we'll, we'll try to gather together, in this case, a bunch of ryes, and when you do a bunch of a similar thing together, one after the other after the other, you can really pick out the distinct differences. Um, we also do some verses where it's just one bottle against one bottle. If you guys haven't seen that Ardbeg 10 versus Lefroy 10, that was awesome. I really love that one. That one's, that one's doing good, too, actually, in, in, our, in views for us. So. Yeah, it's like an evergreen. It's picking yeah. up saying. There might be some people watching and wondering if we're going to get around to this Balvini 16. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> I've been waiting. I kept almost reaching for it and yeah. going, can't do it yet. So let's do it, brother. Kick it off. Well, I apologize because I've been drinking the whole night. So yeah, <laughs> you just keep doing it. You got that huge bottle. Actually, I did warm up a little bit. Um, yesterday's episode was McAllen edition number two, so I did pour me. I had a little shot of that that I was warming up with in our uh, the Riedel uh, single malt glass that we got to test. So yeah, you can tell that's unchilled filtered too. It's a little cloudy yeah, there. It did get a little cloudy. All right, the Balvini sixteen year to me on the nose is pretty mild. Mm -hmm. and I was hoping for a little bit more sherry on the nose because I love the sherry, and there is a little bit present, but not as much as I thought. Go ahead, Trooper. What do you got? Yeah, definitely, definitely sweet honeys, vanillas. And this is also, I have not had this before. I don't have notes on it. I had to say, I've got a sample bottle of it again for those just joining in. And so I poured it, and this is my first. And Bart also, I think this is the first time you've had this. That is correct. I agree. I get a real strong honey. Those vanilla notes in there. Keeps coming back though to that honey. That honey is just a delicious, rich, a creaminess. But again, that honey is probably the thing that comes out strongest for me. Mm. Um, okay, yeah. And Adam Irving just asked what the three casks are. Um, I know one is, well, you got the bottle there. Yeah. Three so bottles. it's. Um, so we got traditional whiskey cask. Um, let's see. Which is probably just a prior field yeah. bourbon cask. And then a first fill bourbon um, and then a sherry butt. Okay. And maybe that's why the sherry's not as pronounced to me or as, as much as I thought would be on the nose because it's only one of the three casks. Yeah, and then it's not matured. It's just mixed. Giving a little extra boost. Mixed and then... Uh, Frank Frank Lampard points out that he hasn't tried a Balvini that he doesn't like, and I agree with him on that. I haven't had a Balvini that I haven't liked either. Yeah, yeah. I'd... In fact, is a lot of people have asked me what's your favorite Scotch or your favorite line, and, and uh, undoubtedly, I always say Balvini. The first first that comes to mind. I mean, there's several, but Balvini is the first that comes to mind. Now, see, I would say Brook Lottie, but 
for someone that's new, you are 100% right. I'll send them to, to the Balvenie. A lot of times even send them to that Caribbean cask just because of that sweetness in there. Although yeah. if I got somebody that's got sticker shock, I'll tell them that's 70 bucks. Yeah. So sometimes I'll steer them elsewhere if they're like, what? I'm like, I'm telling you, it's good. So oh, I, hold on. Bruno's like in a Zen moment there. He even woo! had some kind of exhalation. Man, that has a great first impression. Mm -hmm. uh, those prior bourbon fill casts are coming out. Just a hint of sherry in there, but the vanilla. Um, it's like citrus, candy. oak. Mm. The the my only negative to this is it being at forty percent. That's what I was going to ask. Was what what our ABV was? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would I would love it a little bit stronger, um, but it is still. It doesn't really taste forty though. I mean, some forties seem a little weak. Uh, I, I didn't think this was fifty percent, but I probably would have thought it was forty three, maybe forty five percent, just off of the mouthfeel. Yeah, and the only reason I say that is last night to do some um, research. Um, we did a, a tasting with this, uh, the double wood, the twelve and the seventeen. Um, and I didn't know, like I, I tasted this a couple days before prior, um, loved it. And same as you, I was like, man, that mouth, it was just the, the taste was just phenomenal. Um, but, uh, comparing it to the others, then you see like, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. This is just a tad bit weaker. Um, but still, still a glorious dram. So, Bart, well, it comes in. I definitely get those sherry notes, kind of a softer raisin. Um, the only thing slightly odd for me is it almost feels a little bit, and I don't know if it's the right description, but almost a little bit flat for me. Like it's not popping me through some extra transitions that I'm kind of used to, mm -hmm. but it definitely still holds on to that sweetness. I'm still getting a little bit after about 15, 20 seconds. I'm getting a little bit of that aftertaste that is maybe, um, I don't know, I get more of a sugar-watered aftertaste, not really a caramel. Um, but this is my first time ever. That was my first sip. So I'm going to continue nosing and tasting on it. Um, um, I would say, I mean, it definitely leans toward more. I could see Scott's palate definitely more so here. Um, but it's delicious. I, I can get the sherry notes. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not it's not super complex. Um, it's not super rich. Um, and I think, and it's been a while since I've gone to like the 17 year double wood, but I think it's probably pulling in quite a bit more um, sherry and the, and the oak in there. Mm -hmm. that, that 17 year is still my go-to. Um, you can't can't get better than that right now on the Belvini line. I love that seventeen year double wood. Yeah, one of my favorites. And actually, we haven't reviewed it yet. And all I've had is it. I've had several of the three packs. Okay. Where you get the uh, is it the twelve, the fourteen, and then the seventeen year in it now? Okay, yeah. Um, and then I had the seventeen year double wood at a at a tasting one time a while back, but. I'm going to continue to let it breathe a little bit, but now I'm definitely after it's transitioning out of that sherry, I'm getting more of the wood, mm -hmm. more of that oak. Um, and then at the same time, that's what, where I'll pick up a little bit of that sweetness kind of layered in there. But it really, the, the aftertaste kind of drops off sharp for me and then trails out and is gone in about, probably in about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, Whiskey Lassie is asking real quick the cost of this one compared to the 14-year. And it's pretty similar, I think, pretty close, but this is travel retail only. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I found it in Glasgow. It, yeah, it was 60 pounds, I think it was. So what does that transfer over to? Well, we were... Um, well, we were just talking with Ben Bowers. We had him on two weeks ago, and he said the conversion rate is just about one for one right now. Okay. No, really? It's down that far? Yeah. Wow. I knew Brexit had some effect on it, but I didn't know it would come down that far. What was that ding that just popped through? 
Did you hear that? Uh, that was your wife texting me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you drinking scotch in mid-afternoon? I've got one sick youngin upstairs, so I keep waiting to see if the alarm bell goes off and says, quit your TV thing and get up here. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brett, uh, you got a sign in the background there uh, that you've handwritten some kind of Sharpie thing. I don't know. Maybe a, is that a Yoda quote? What is that? That's, that's one of my favorite lines from Han Solo. And uh, probably as we um, as we do these, that saying is going to change probably each video. So you guys will have to pay attention. Really? Hokey religions and ancient weapons. Or no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> I can't wait. They yeah. got the, uh, what, the prequel uh, trilogy all focused on a young Han Solo. Bring it, baby. I want it yesterday. I See, I was going to try it out for the young Han Solo, but my gray hair wouldn't let me. As long as they bring in uh, Bubba Fett early enough, uh, he better show up because – it's been too long since we've seen him on the screen. Well, I keep hearing he might even get, I don't know, uh, he might end up getting his own little feature. I would imagine they'll tease him in that trilogy. And and if they're strong enough, uh, I mean, they could do a whole deal just on Boba. Yeah, that would be awesome. Somebody was ragging on Boba Fett a little bit, but uh, just saying oh. he's such, yeah, yeah, when we did our little, uh, my photo with him next to that uh, that ride, but they were saying, you know, it's just a cult thing. He doesn't do much. He didn't seem – I don't know, though. He carried something with him. He doesn't have to do much. He's Bubba. Exactly. Yeah. That, they're just jealous. That's fine. Like, <laughs> I, and I will say, I I may be, you know, heavy end on the um, Stormtroopers, but Bubba Fett was always my my number one character. See, Han was my number one, and then I love Boba Fett just right off the bat. And they just, I mean, play off of each other. So I'm really excited on what's to come. Yeah. So, how, are, how are you feeling about uh, Rogue One? Yeah, hey, it looks great. You know what? Uh, you know what the great thing for me is, of course, I'm hoping the storyline is going to be wonderful. But this whole idea that they're going on location, they're using models, they're using, you know, film technology to get the shots they need and then CD when they can't do what they want to do and not, or not overusing it. I love it. It just looks grittier to me. It looks more yep. real to me. The shots are phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're up to, uh, we got 45 people that are tuning in right now and the comments are just rolling in. I'm trying to watch them. Um, and, I, and naturally, I can't keep up with all those. But you guys got you guys got a great uh, line of uh, conversation going there amongst yourselves. So keep it up. I've been I've been I've been just trying to watch. And my favorite one so far is that Bubba Fett would drink Fireball. Oh, <laughs> get out of here! Yeah, what? <laughs> we had guys like that at work. I'd be mentioning like a. Like uh, the Brook Lottie Black Arts, they'd be like, you try Fireball? And I'd be like, oh, no, <laughs> I haven't tried Fireball. I'm sorry. Now, is yeah, I Laddie, is I Laddie in there, Scott? Uh, yeah, he was. he's joined in. We got, I mean, we got uh, the North Shore Whiskey Club is here. Um, they just asked about if we wanted the Patriots in Denver. Or they think Patriots in Denver are heading for the AFC Championship game. Uh We've got uh, Ani Ball has joined in again. Jerome D is here. Cujo Key twenty three. Adam Irving, Raster, Lana still here. Frank Lampard, Whiskey Rover. Um, you sure, that isn't Lena. Lana. You sure that's not pronounced Lena? Lena. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple comments too that the six the the conversion rate is uh, dollars about a dollar twenty two. So add about a fifth to it, and uh, Whiskey Lassie pointed out sixty dollars would be about seventy five dollars U.S. for this bottle. Okay, so it's pretty much spot on then. Yeah, with the fourteen year. Uh, Kevin E is here. Try to call out as many people as I can see. If I had Big Papa, um, Food Quig, I think I mentioned him earlier. Malted in Montreal. 
Um, these are the ones that are commenting. We might we got people that are watching that aren't commenting or probably aren't signed in, you know, to comment. So I just got a really nice grainy and oaky flavor coming off of this. So it definitely is. I've I've drained out the sample, but uh, I'm going to let what I've got sit in there a while longer because it is transitioning for me nicely. Uh, hello to Ed Scotsland, who just joined in and commented, hello, gents. Cheers. And uh, Whiskey Rover says, he didn't say what the hell, but picture that in the worst in the worst terms of WTF. He says, what the hell is Fireball? <laughs> You're not missing much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the coworker was like telling us, it's like a atomic hot Fireball candy, and but you drink it. And I was like, wow, that's a hell of a flavor note right there he's Whiskey. like yeah they they add artificial flavoring get it like that wow there's a bonus put that on the bottle yeah right <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i'm gonna be wishing i had more than this uh than the sample of the 16 year balvini triple cast i'll uh i'll drink more for you guys how about that <laughs> Uh, once again, everybody tuning in, I think most of you probably know Scotch Trooper is with us today. Uh, we're tasting the Balvini 16 year triple cask, a Scotch Trooper, of course, of Instagram fame, uh, takes pictures of stormtroopers with Scotch bottles and whiskey bottles and other star Wars figures, not just stormtroopers. Uh, mm -hmm. it makes lamps, beautiful lamps. Check out his, uh, web page, which is where, where do people check out your, your products at? You got shirts, you've got, uh. Glen Cairns that are available. Yeah, uh, Glen, Glen Cairns are through uh, Sipdark, um, sipdark.com. And then uh, everything else is kind of funneling through my blog right now, which is uh, just scotchtrooper.com. Um, and then obviously uh, Instagram, um, scotch underscore trooper. Now, I don't know if you can go into it, but because of the photos, and I may be wrong in this. Did you get invited to something with uh, Star Wars or Lucas, or are you even able to go into that? I can go into it. Um, we uh, so yeah, through through the blog, I got um, contacted by someone who works at Lucas Films um, to actually go out there and take whiskey photos um, on campus, um, which then turned into a pretty interesting scenario since uh, they then contacted their PR department to try to get me some special access. And then they were like, wait, you're bringing whiskey on campus. That's not a good idea. And so there was a lot of like hand slapping and stuff like that, but it ended up, we still, we still ended up going out and had a blast. Um, we were able to watch a couple, um, scenes, um, in their theater there, which was phenomenal. Um, I got to stand next to the original stormtrooper costume from a new hope. Um, I may have shed a tear or two. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just, it was phenomenal just being able to be around that much Star Wars. It was yeah. glorious. Now, now they'll, you're so awesome with your photos. They'll invite you back. Little do they know you're, you're going to be so famous. Then you're going to have to have a couple helpers carrying some of your equipment. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can like, I mean, uh, you know, suitcases full of bottles, whatever you need carried. I'm a great lighter kind of, I can just light your scene for you. <laughs> I actually, that actually would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> See, there so you much go. Of it, so much of it was, was low lit and stuff like that. So yeah, that would have been helpful. Boom. Yeah, I'll just stand there. Won't say a word. I'll be as quiet as Boba, baby. <laughs> No, that was really cool. I saw some of that and I thought, isn't that cool? I mean, I mean, to be quite honest, even our live shows here, the fact that we're able to link up with you, chat with you, and and even share a dram all at the same time. Um, Scott and I, one of our goals for, for 2016 were was to get some kind of live show going. Just so everybody knows, full disclosure, I took a shot at it, failed epically. Like I had it mixed with my <laughs> other account. The whole thing collapsed, and Scott is just shaking his head. And then, luckily, uh, we met a, a, a coworker of ours that does this whole author hangout show, very similar to this. And uh, and Scott decided to jump in and take a little tutorial with him, and boom, we got it up by 2016. So that is thanks to Scott. Well done, sir. 
Yeah, you had, uh, and you had been, you'd been a guest on shows prior. And uh, that's why I was like, Hey, find out how that guy set that up. Cause you know, you got three people on there. You can see them down there at the bottom. People are commenting. It's a great time. We need to get that going. And you're like, I'm on it. And then oh. it's like eight months later, nothing. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I'm on something, it sounds like I'm really on it. Like you, you will not think I'm, I am not going in halfway. I'm all on it. Uh, I was on a show, live show. It was great. A whole board game thing I do. And, and I'm like, boom, I got it handled. And then by the time I'm in the midst of it, it was like a, it was like a Han Solo deal gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, North Shore Wh Whiskey Club, um, Trooper, they want to know a little bit about your trip you just took to Scotland. So, yeah, that was a three-day trip um, to Ardbeg, um, which was quite phenomenal. Um, we got to spend – uh, one full day with Mickey Heads, um, ended up with a, well, it started, that one day started with a four-hour tour of the distillery with him, um, just walking us around and giving us his stories, and um, ended up, the next step was like a, a nice long lunch with him and a boat ride, um, which is kind of interesting because I get seasick, um, but we took this nice boat ride out uh, a mile out from uh, Ardbeg and one of the guys riding the boat just put on scuba gear, jumped in the water and was gone for 15 minutes. And we're all like, we had like three or four coats on freezing our ass off. Like just I'm like, how is this guy handling water right now? Cause I can't even handle air. And then, uh, and then he comes up 15 minutes later with just this basket full of scallops and stuff like that and throws it on board. And we're driving around Isla um, in the water with this guy shucking oysters and scallops, handing it to us while we're drinking whiskey. Um, phenomenal. Um, it, was, it was one of those moments like you're like, why am I here? Like this, this is just like an out of body experience at that point, but it was phenomenal. Um, and then uh, ended up with a nice uh, dinner with him. Um, and then the last tasting of that night, we did like the 21 year and stuff like that. And, um, their whole the whole core range and then ended with the 1815 which was just awesome you're right over there yeah Scott. i was looking at i just had a little comment on twitter come in it popped up on the screen there so i was just trying to read it oh yeah i got to that's usually how he looks when i say something like in person to him something <laughs> <laughs> yeah when i said let's do a 10 bottle rye shootout boom he was all like what what he was all up on there <laughs> yeah he's like i almost killed you last time we did a big old shootout you're out your mind he turns all it's like he's from atlanta at that point <laughs> he's bringing he's sipping sweet tea wanting his bourbon straight he's a good he's complete change <laughs> oh boy i can hear my kids screaming upstairs Ooh. Was that the uh, was that the Woodford Reser Rye Reserve? Yeah, because we was talking. He was talking about Boba Fett at the end. And we hadn't scored it, and we hadn't even talked about if it was worth it. And all of a sudden, you're like, "Scotch it, you Scotch gods!" And I'm like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. Well, we all know when I get excited, things just come off the rails. That's half the fun, right there. Just <laughs> boom. Our show, as everyone can tell, is completely unscripted. Boom. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, uh, Trooper, Raster had asked a little bit ago, um, pick out one of your favorite bottles on the shelf behind you and comment. Oh, God. <laughs> you got to go. The house is on fire. You can grab, you got your kid in one arm. You got to grab a bottle right now and get, what do you get? What do you grab? That's literally, your house isn't on fire. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, what's going on? <laughs> Pick one. Come on. Uh, a lot of hesitation there. A lot of hesitation. Four, I'm sure. Three, two. Doesn't know one. what he's doing. Yo. Oh, my God. Uh, it's all lost. Yeah. The, the, the spirit went up in flames right there. <laughs> he's right there. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Oh, what would he get? Cargis? Yep, the Cargis. Wow. Yeah. All that back there behind you? Wow, I grabbed the carcass. That's the one I'm pulling right now. 
That's good. Yeah, why not? Um, so, yeah, so I was able to uh, taste this with Simon uh, Brooking when he came into Atlanta. Um, and uh, for some reason, it just it hit me the right way. Um, but, man, just uh, the Madeira cask is just phenomenal. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to taste the previous years, um, but this one is just phenomenal. Yep, I picked that one up. I haven't tasted it yet. I loaned it out to Bruno for testing. It's come back, um, but I just, uh, for whatever reason, haven't gotten around to it yet. I know you've had it, right, Bruno? You tried it and sent it back. Yes, yep. So we've got a few. Now, Bruno, uh, Scott, I know you picked up some recent compass boxes. I'm seeing your compass oh. box shelf. Are they up there? Well, let, well, let, let's save that for when we have John Glazier on the show. Oh, boom. That's right. <laughs> no. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, he's like, who are you dummies? Yeah, he. we haven't yeah. talked to John. John. John's not just, talking. Uh, just the other day, the first one, the three-year deluxe, which uh, yeah. we'll, we'll pick that up just based on the – the marketing and the story of that. And then I love, of course, the, the packaging and the artwork that Compass Box is coming up with, but even just the, the packaging on this, the tube for the Spice Tree Extravaganza. That's awesome. You can just look at that all day. Yeah, I had, I, um, John was at uh, Whiskey Fest in San Francisco when we were out there for Lucas Films. Um, and was able to try both those phenomenal stuff. Now, here's the deal for those that don't know. Um, last year, John Glazier Compass Box got into trouble when they released, when he basically put out the recipes or the menu for what, or not the menu, but just what was going into um, the circus and enlightenment. Well, he put it right so on the bottle. The whole tra- he did the whole transparency um, campaign. And didn't didn't completely not get anything changed. What he did get changed is they said, okay, you can release the contents of your whiskeys, but not to any advertising source. So if an individual contacts you and wants to know what's in your whiskeys, you can tell them. So if you haven't been to the Compass Box website, with these two new releases with uh, the three year deluxe and the spice tree ex- extravaganza, you can ask for the recipe and they will email it to you. I didn't should not going to show that real quick. Cause I don't want anybody zooming in and seeing what's in them, <laughs> but that's the, uh, from, from compass box, you get that basically the age statements of each whiskey that's in there. That's awesome. I love it. I just love the idea that he took the uh, the three year deluxe and put what a, like a a quarter of an ounce of three year into something that's got these real old whiskeys in it, and then it's like three hundred bucks. Because yeah, because that's going to drive people to say, "What the hell am I paying this much for a three year whiskey for?" Yeah, and then it gets tons of coverage and a whole lot of media press and everything. I mean, it's genius. The guy's a marketing genius. Yeah, freaking yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, the, and someone is asking if the three-year deluxe is peated, and I was looking to see it is peated. It's got uh, I'm Klein Elish, Klein Elish. I'm okay. sure you're spot on there. <laughs> <laughs> um, without going into the ages, I was just looking real quick to see what it was that was in that one. And I, I mean, without. Well, we are the dummies, so expect the perfect pronunciation every time one of our mouths opens. It's going to be just, it's darn near Gaelic. <laughs> I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody named Bart Brunsheen, that's it with the whole German background. You know, Gaelic just flows from my mouth, my English mouth, and just perfect tone. I'm trying to cover some airtime as, as Scott reads there. What you got, brother? What you got? I don't. I, don't, I, I can't see it on there without I mean, really uh, uh, stringing this out. But yeah, it is peated. There's some uh, Highland and some peated whiskeys that are in the three year deluxe, and then the Spice Tree Extravaganza is is a I think it's a tenth year or tenth anniversary of the Spice Tree release. Um, but it's got uh, Sherry First Fill Sherry Butt First Fill Sherry Butt. Refill American Standard Barrel, Light Medium Toast, uh, Highland Malt Blend, Highland Malt Blend, um, 
So several, one, two, three, six different parcels are in the spice tree extravaganza. Very cool, very cool. Now I'm down to my last little bit here. Um, I, I'm saying it's definitely, as I've let it sit, it's definitely opened up more. Um, anything else? Uh, we still got plenty of time here, but Trooper, anything else you want to say on this, uh, this beautiful Balvenie that you've given us samples of? I'm going to, um, I'm going to pour some more. Well, just to well, make, you, make you guys a little jealous. I'm sorry. Bingo. Jealous. Very jealous. And if I, okay. Uh, big, Papa saying if, if I dabble with bourbon, um, I do. I'm just now um, trying to make that transition into bourbons. Um, I'm uh, a big fan of Michter's, um, Angel's Envy. Um, uh, what else do I got over there? Um, I West. Wait, did, did you try? I sent you a sample of the whiskey of the year, the Booker's Ride. Did you try that yet? I have not tried it yet, no. Uh oh. I can go, I can run up and get it now, but um, no, I have not tried it yet. Don't bend to his pressure. You just stay seated. <laughs> you yeah, just take your sit down with that some night. Take your time and see what you think. I definitely will. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I am I am trying to make that that jump. Um, it's it's a lot harder when you've started with scotch um, and jumping backward. Um, it's it's hit, hitting me a lot harder this time. Um, but uh, I'm definitely enjoying, like I said, uh, a few select ones, and I think the the transition is getting there. So, um, yeah, those virgin oak barrels really bring out a whole lot of strong flavor, and just for me, I, I get a lot more complexity with what's going on, the amount of time it's in the barrel from scotch. But I've definitely found some bourbons I like, and I'm really warming up to uh, a lot of the rise. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my favorite mixers right now is the rye. Um, it started as a uh, one night experimentation, and then I woke up the next morning and like half the bottle was gone. So oh, it, was, it was a good night. Yes, <laughs> that's a good experimentation. <laughs> yeah, God hasn't done that since college. <laughs> it wasn't just me, but yes, it was. <laughs> No, we're also speaking of experimentation, something we've talked about. We're just kind of kicking around 2017 because we've actually tried a couple really nice gins. There's some great rums kicking around out there, the uh, cognacs, and well, I always say it wrong, Armagnac. But we were actually kicking around, maybe doing a Thursday show that would be something out of the whiskey range that might be, uh, you know, everything from tequila um to gin to rum so we've been kind of floating that around as a 2017 goal i like it well it, yeah when we first started we were doing once a week we were doing a scotch or a world whiskey well we did scotch and then kind of we started doing some world whiskeys we did some irish we did some japanese then we started doing two episodes a week, and on Wednesdays we would do a Canadian whiskey or, an Amer or America's whiskey, basically, Northern America. And my computer is shutting down for some reason. My desktop, not my laptop. Okay. But, um, so now we've gone, now we've introduced live streams as well on Sundays, and now we're talking about possibly even another show during the week if we do gins, if we do rums, you know, stuff like that, bringing those up. So... Um, and then we even did, well, we had, uh, with the McAllen edition two, we got the, the Riedel, uh, single malt glasses. Um, we got spirits glasses from them and then we've gotten tequila glasses and cognac glasses. So we thought, well, if, if we start getting kind of drinking accessories, you know, glasses and stuff like that, having, you know, that show going as well. So. Who needs a day job? I can't get I can't get Bart to do Facebook posts now. Oh, hey, I've been doing a little <laughs> bit more. I've been typing. Well, I typed on there a whole deal about how is anybody even tuning in or watching on Facebook, and it, it hit like 500 people. Like, yeah, even when you send them late, it's a reminder for shows I've missed. So I've been trying to get into that a little, little bit more. So, and then Scott's just started up, uh, what, your Instagram? You're putting selfies of yourself on there or something? What are you doing? Yeah. Well, that's just uh, me and Trooper, we met up the other night to kind of do a test run at this. 
And we've had several people tell us, oh, you got to get on Instagram. You got to, you know, Instagram's big, do this and that. And I'm like, yeah, we're on Twitter. You know, you put pictures on Twitter, you, you put pictures on Facebook. Now I got to put them on Instagram too. And uh, so after talking to Trooper though, the other night, I thought, all right, it's time to get up on Instagram. Yep. Yeah. Quite happy to see you guys there. It's about time. And on Instagram, well, on, on Twitter, we're at Scotch Test Dummy with an I. And on Instagram, we're real Scotch Test Dummies. Scotch Test Dummy was our, or Scotch Test Dummies was already taken. And I'm trying to pull my computer started, my Windows computer started running updates for some reason. That's because so it's, uh, it's because it's Windows. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right in the middle of a live stream. Um, so I'm pulling up this video on, on my tablet, on iPad. For I've lost my comments for right now. I can't see what people are commenting. Gotcha. Now, as we're, we're getting close, we're kind of in our last nine, eight minutes or so. Uh, so Trooper, what else you got planned? You got anything new coming on? You're doing some your new trip, or you're doing some new bottles with lamps? What what do you got going on? I am taking the rest of the year off. <laughs> uh, I I um I'm enjoying the uh, enjoying the lamps the way they are right now. Um, I am out of vacation on my day job, so uh, any trips or anything like that is pretty much out of the question right now until until next year. Um, got a couple things in, in the, the back burner, but yeah, until, until I get those, those extra PTO days, um, I'm kind of at the mercy of, of my, of my job, my day job. So cool. now we did mention, do you have an iPad or anything with some of your photos that you could even hold up to the screen and roll through or anything? I have my iPhone. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, Cause I know, I know we were. I, I didn't really come up with the way I wanted to get some of your photos on and I know they can go to your website, but, uh, but, uh, I think I even went over and saved over or, or when we, we threw a couple of your photos up on one of our pre-recorded shows. I think we, we did when we got, when we got the lamp yeah. and we did uh, an episode and uh, we threw a few of his pictures in there. I think that was Bushmills. We, Might have been because you even have a cool deal where, like, uh, it looked like I think you got a photo where Vader's choking out or lifting a bottle or something. I do. Um, that was for Mictors. Let's see if I can pull that one up. All right, Bruno, has your PC stopped its update? No, it's installing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, everybody that's watching, I apologize. I can't see your comments. I've got, so this, I've, got, I've got our channel up on, on my iPad, but the comments aren't on there. So, so if this comes through here from one computer to the next, that's my Mictors post with them uh, lifting the, the bottle. Can't give away the trade secrets how that happened. <laughs> Although I will tell you for a, a later post, I tried to incorporate the help of my daughter, who's six years old, um, to hold the bottle. While I took photos of it, that did not turn out very well. Um, what, how long? How long? What would you say you take? So you take a picture of that Mictors. How long? How long does that take you to do? How much time do you spend? So it it varies. Um, there are some shots that between coming up with the idea, setting it up, shooting it, and posting it could be um, any like maybe an hour between all that. Um, but there's also some shots where, uh, it'll take half a day Ooh. and I'll say, screw this, I'm done and throw it all away. Uh, <laughs> oh. so yeah, so it, it really, it really varies. There's sometimes my, my mind's eye comes up with something that I just can't replicate and I get frustrated and then just stop. So, huh. so, so sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes not so much. There was actually a, a buddy of mine who, who started a, um, a, a very similar account for Deadpool. And he's like, do you, do you mind if I do this? And I'm like, oh, no, how about it? I said, but I'll tell you that you'll probably give up about 10 shots in. And he's like, oh, no, yeah, that's, that's cool. I get it. Um, <laughs> he lasted two shots. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's awesome. It's fun. It's a great creative outlet. But there are definitely some days where it's just a little bit more frustrating. All right. Um, we'll say a Balvini 16-year triple cask, 
Um, do, do we want to do, is it worth it? Do we want to do, I hate to score it based on this. It's definitely around a 90, I would say, based on my sample. Yeah, I don't know if I could score it just on that. I'll be honest with you. So I liked it, but I would want to spend a lot more time with it. And uh, it was opening up and changing as I went through it. So I personally won't score it. Now, I will tell you, I finished, I, 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 was, I was thinking I had it here, but I did finish my sample, and then I had a little bit of my McAllen edition number two that I went to that was sitting off to the side, mm -hmm. and noticeable difference going to it from the Balvini of the Sherry coming out. Yeah, the, the Balvini 16-year didn't have near the Sherry that I thought it would have, just mm -hmm. a slight, one note, I, at one time I did get a slight, slight hint of, uh, of a raisin in it. Um, uh, upper 80s, probably. I hate, what about, okay, is it worth it? Say $70 a bottle. Well, and Trooper, you've bought your bottle. What do you think? Do you regret the purchase? Not at all. I mean, I, I, I can't say I've ever regretted buying a Bovini. So, yeah. Um, no, definitely worth it. Um, like I said, I would like to, to see it a little bit stronger at 43, 46, um, but, but still definitely worth it. Yep, I agree. Send that to me. Forty six. If they were putting out something yeah. or even a little stronger, oh boy, I'd be all over it. Yeah, it's worth it. Even at seventy. But yeah, I'm with you. I would have liked a little bit more of a kick. I didn't even put a drop of water in it because I felt yep. like it was already down where it should be. And like you, I wished it was up a little bit. All right. Well, uh, closing comments, Trooper. Cheers, guys. It's been great to finally sit down and share a dram with you. I agree. Thank, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. That was My awesome. Pleasure. Thank you for changing your time from 11 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> my my five o'clock wake up call tomorrow really thanks you. <laughs> We're trying to do that. That's mostly my fault. My wife was like, you're doing live shots and they're going to be when? And, and, da, da, da. and I was like, well, we'll do them later. So, but I think she's, she's warming up to it. And then I try to do extra little things that allow forgiveness to be easier. <laughs> that's, that's what marriage is, isn't it? <laughs> that, is it. that is it. What about yeah, you, Scott? My, my apologies to everybody on the, my computer's updating all of a sudden. I can't see your comments. Thanks to everybody that joined in and commented. I appreciate it. We'd like to be able to address every comment that comes in, but uh, I don't, Naturally, we can't do that, but um, that's it for me, Bart. Scotch it, you scotch gods. Salancha. Salancha. Dummies. Dummies.